Most historic objects, including Windsor armchairs, were primarily functional. In the case of chairs, people sat in them. When they did, they often were reading or writing, conducting business, holding important or even personal conversations, or simply thinking. Museum labels often tell us basic facts. Who made it? Where was it made? What is it made of? Who owned it? And maybe what style it is? Other stories about vital conversations and connections that link the objects to the larger world are typically left out. A chair, a shaving bowl, a sugar bowl, a plate. How are disparate objects connected? These objects create a complex matrix centered around colonial British ideas about empire, trade, and race. Many of these issues are just as relevant today as they were two centuries ago. This is an 18th century mahogany Windsor chair made in Jamaica. A wealthy Caribbean planter might have bought this expensive chair. It may have been made by a black cabinet maker who may have been enslaved. Perhaps the planter sat down in it to be groomed by one of his slaves using this shaving bowl. The bowl depicts the various tools used in grooming, including the comb, soap, and razor blades. Shaving was a particular moment of vulnerability as the razor is on the master's neck, held by one of his slaves, his neck in the shaving basin. The planter probably made his money growing sugarcane to be refined into table sugar and rum. Westerners became culturally and even physically dependent on these commodities, and in fact, they linked the Jamaican planter to a much larger and very profitable transatlantic world. Rum was a common commodity consumed in Europe and in Great Britain. Rum can signify socializing and leisure. But as this pot depicts, rum is also associated with rowdiness and immorality, as these two men duke it out and the other vomits onto the ground. The production of rum and sugar on Jamaican plantations, including the one where the Windsor chair's owner may have lived, was only possible because of the institution of slavery. The European authorities who took control of most Caribbean islands starting in the early 17th century imposed slavery on both the native populations and Africans who were captured and brought across the ocean. It is problematic to talk about this chair, and indeed all of the objects we have looked at so far, without also talking about slavery and its histories. When the Jamaican Windsor chair was made toward the latter part of the 18th century, there was a growing sense among many Brits and Americans that the brutal and inhumane slave trade finally had to end. If we add in this early 19th century tobacco box, we can see how objects were important to the movement against slavery. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, it was nearly impossible for English and American people to avoid using slave-made goods like cotton, sugar, and tobacco. Some abolitionists rejected these goods and pointed out how consumers were complicit in slavery and the slave trade, using snuff boxes and sugar pots to reveal the pervasiveness of slavery in daily life. The traffic in humans and the push for abolition reached far beyond the transatlantic world, into the Ottoman Empire and the Indian Ocean world. This late 18th century ceramic plate features a generic Turk, perhaps a slave trading pirate from the North African coast, and an enslaved person carrying a bale for shipping. The scenes represented on this teapot and plate can also tell us about how European empires generated ideas about race. Here, we see a racist image of an exoticized oriental figure in nature, with his limbs blending in with the vines. Images like this reinforce intolerant Western ideas about cultural otherness and the supposed savagery of so-called native populations. The image of the figure on this teapot likely would have been seen by its Anglo-American users as both fascinating and also a bit frightening. Today, contemporary artists still use 18th century methods and tropes to comment upon new global movements of commodities and peoples. Here, Paul Scott has satirically altered a piece of chinoiserie from the 1840s. He plays with the notion that many Euro-American goods are created in China, shipped across the Pacific on container ships, and then trucked to their final destinations. 
This centuries-long process of representing European and non-European identities using certain symbols might lead us to question when objects are merely objects and when they reveal chains of power. Contemporary ceramic artist Michelle Erickson creates a heroic bust of a Native American figure who is completely overstamped with the logos of European empires. Yet, he is not reduced to a tiny abstract figure. He is heroic in scale and stoic in countenance. Taken together, these objects reframe this 18th century mahogany chair as not merely an innocent place to sit, but an object connected to these larger issues of empire, slavery, abolition, and identity formation.